Hello and welcome to the Whiskey News on the 7th of August 2023. And we have a number of very interesting news. The first one is King Charles opens the Eight Doors Distillery. The Eight Doors Distillery is a very, very northern distillery. In fact, now it is the most northern distillery on the Scottish mainland. It was back in the days, it was Pultney, and then it was a long term Wolfburn, and now it is the uh, Eight Doors Distillery. It's in the little town John O'Groats, and the official opening was on the 2nd of August. And as King Charles was there, he actually did fill one American Oak PX Hawkshead. And that is nice because since 1837, that was the first barrel or cask that was filled uh, yeah, since 1837. So nice that the whiskey distilling comes back to that very northern part of Scotland as well. Then we have a bit of a yeah, change in personnel. Kelsey McCatchney, hopefully I pronounced that right, is going to be the new malt master at Balvini. Uh, her predecessor, David C. Stewart, is now, uh, after 60 years, yes, 60 years at Balvini, at the Balvini, uh, he is now uh, yeah, stepping back and actually not that stepping back. He becomes an the honorable brand ambassador, which <laughs> he might as well enjoy because you can scoot around the world and bring Balvini to the corners of the world. And yeah, um, Kelsey McCatchney Kach is not uh, a newbie at the distillery. She is there since 2014, uh, or at least at William Grants and Sons, so she knows the Balvini. And she was uh, 2022. She has been her protege, the joint malt master, and now she is the new malt master. Um, for the uh, this this happening, there is a bottling, the Belvini a revelation of cask and character. It's part of their stories, uh, bottlings, and yeah, the first bottling created by her, an eighteen and nineteen year old Oloroso sherry cask, with forty seven point five percent ABV, and it will be around three hundred fifty euros. Another change in personnel, this time uh, stepping back, and he's really getting into retirement, and that is the co-founder Simon Coughling of Bruchladi. And yeah, he stepped back in end of July after 23 years at Bruchladi. He founded actually the distillery with uh, Simon Coughling, Mark Rene, and ma uh, master distiller Jim McEwen. Um, founded as they they reopened the mothball distillery in 2001 uh, but they actually did have a, a trade with Remy Contron and sold it in 2012 so uh, um, Simon actually stepped back as CEO of Brochladi and got into the whiskey division of uh, Remy Contron and is uh, was part of the executive committee uh, during his time as a CEO, they actually got a lot of, uh, yeah, they become really uh, environmentally and social uh, responsible distillery and got the B Corp certificate for that. Yeah, then we have um, yeah, not so good news. Um, Gordon McPhail is actually stopping their um, independent bottling yeah, business. It will not be off and it will not stop tomorrow actually they will not buy any new make uh, uh, after 2024 so they stop new make new make 2024 just because they they just cannot get any new make anymore so they are now focusing on ben romach and the cairn so the company is gonna stay they are just gonna be a company behind distilleries and yeah, I think they will keep on doing their spirit, which is a great thing. Then we have another distillery that is being opened, and that is Rosebank Distillery. The Lowland Distillery was closed for um, yeah since 1993. It is a 150 year old distillery, and after this 30 year break, they are now producing in the Lowlands. The old equipment. They can, couldn't refurbish it, but they did have the plans, so they did uh, um, make new stills after the original plans of the old stills and of the old equipment. So it's got nearly the old 
um, distillery. I don't know, maybe they do have the old new make so they can actually run the still Rosebank again like they did before. Or maybe they're gonna do a new thing. Uh, in the next year, they actually do want to open for visitors, which is a big thing for Lowlands because it's just there are more people going around there. Then we have news from Johnny Walker and they are starting a new uh, initiative for women's sports. They're working together with the actor Hannah Waddington from the series Ted Lasso. Um, it will be a promotional video and stuff. And they're working together with FIFA to promote the uh, women's fo football world, or soccer world cup. And um, they're also giving 100,000 to the Women's Sports Foundation to yeah. Yeah, bring women's sports to the front, forefront. Then we have Glenn Torchers. Uh, they are actually in the news because they actually did something remarkable. They saved about 50% energy and CO2 emissions in their distillery. Um, actually, it's not quite 50, it's 48, but come on, that's 50. <laughs> and 53% uh, CO2 emissions. And that is mainly due to new technology of heat regeneration. So you can heat recycle a lot and therefore you can reduce all the gas you're burning and therefore CO2 emissions are falling as well. Um, that would actually be so much that you could, um, uh, with that energy, you could uh, run 5,000 average UK households. That is quite a lot. And what is really nice is Panoric Car is actually uh, saying, actually uh, releasing their technology, how they actually did it. I mean, every distillery, it's not that hard to do that heat recycling, but it's it's nice to see how they actually achieve 50%, which is quite difficult. And so it's a nice thing that they actually released that as well. White McKay is um, investing into Invergarden. Invergarden is a grain distillery up in the Highlands, but the Northern Highlands, it's around Dalmore, so it's Inverness, the up the road, and then there's Dalmore and um, Invergordon. And they want to double their production capacity. Also, they want to build new warehouses for 1.5 million casks. So this uh, should um, increase the supply of older whiskey in the future. Unfortunately, that's grain whiskey, so it's just gonna be bland and grain whiskey. <laughs> yeah, that was it with uh, Scotland, quite some news there. And now we're moving a little bit to Ireland. Teeling Explorers Series 15 Years Japanese Edition is out. It matured 11 years in ex-bourbon casks, and before that, four years in muggy shoshu casks. It's kind of a yeah, distilled wine from um, Japan. 46% ABV, no chill filtration. Unfortunately, first it will be just released in Ireland and later on the international markets. Then we have the USA and Heaven Hill is filling the 10th million cask. Uh, actually, we talked about the 9th million cask at the beginning of 2021 and now they have 10 million. And yeah, it was very interesting. They are open since 1935, and but uh, the cask was not distilled uh, of the Heaven Hill distillery because that was destroyed in 1996. And now they actually do invest. We, we already talked about it last year. Uh, they do invest 135 million into a new distillery. Hopefully that's gonna be the Haven Hill distillery. Then we have Brown Foreman. Germany is launching Jack Daniels and Coca-Cola. <laughs> I can't say that much to it because I just don't drink whiskey and Coke. Uh, yeah. These two legendary brands are getting together. I think a lot of people did already mix it, but now there is a ready to drink variant in the on the shelves with uh, the interesting thing is normal Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola and Zero and um, Jack. So this is, which is strange because I have heard, <laughs> don't drink whiskey and Coke. And um, because I've heard when you mix Coke with Coke light, okay. That's a bit of an old thing, <laughs> Coke Light. Uh, then it becomes really, really bitter because there's some reaction going on there. I don't know if that happens with Zero as well, but 
Is there like the first uh, whiskey and coke light variant out on the market? Will it taste good? I don't know and I will probably never know. <laughs> yeah, so next up is the uh, a bit of more premium news here. Uh, the House of Centuri and uh, they are in uh, yeah, they're unveiling the Legend Yamazaki Cask Finished Blend. This is the um, the joint venture between the Beam and the Sonturi. And now they have um, an eight-year-old American Kentucky Straight Bourbon. They fly it over to America for, for Kyoto and they finish the blending at the Yamasaki Distillery in French oak wine cars, Spanish oak sherry cars and finish in Yamasaki Spanish oak cars. So a lot of casks in there, really atypical for a Kentucky Straight Bourbon. And uh, yeah, or maybe I don't know if it's Kentucky Straight Bourbon if they allowed to call that in. But in the end, it's an international blend, and it will be released for their hundredth anniversary of a Suntory whiskey. Fifty-seven percent ABV, two hundred US dollars suggested repair price, so around one hundred eighty euros. Then we have Make Us Mark, and they are starting to the Make Your Mark campaign, and yeah. It's, it starts with a promotional video, but it's planned that they have also limited products. Um, so it would be very interesting because I, I know that uh, at the distillery you can actually, I think you can get a cask where you can have these different staves in. That's one thing that um, Make Us Mark does with their 46 and then afterwards with the staves. And yeah, that would be interesting if there are these limited products, if they are any good. That might be a very interesting thing. Then next up, we have another joint venture with some musicians. This time it's a rock band called Leonard Skinner. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I don't really don't know them. It's a American rock band uh, from the 70s that's known for their like really historic influence on Southern rock. <laughs> I do like the country, but I, I'm not quite sure what they mean with Southern rock, if that is the same, but I guess it's different. And yeah, they're becoming now 50 years old. And because of that, they are releasing a whiskey called Hell House. And everybody who knows them knows that Hell House was uh, the, the cabin or the studio where they actually uh, did their first song. It's a joint venture with Bespoken Spirits. It will be an American whiskey around 50 US dollars. Then we have the international news. So it's over with the US. Now we go to international and here we are with the Welsh whiskey and Welsh whiskey is now single malt Welsh whiskey is now a thing. You can't call yourself single malt Welsh whiskey if you have not produced it in Wales. After behind that is a lot of Pendarin because they are kind of Welsh whiskey there. There's not much Welsh whiskey except Pendarin. So yeah. Uh, yeah, congratulations to that. Welsh whiskey is now a thing. Now we have uh, the last news, which is a bit of a background news. There is change in management at the top level at Pernod Ricard, the big, yeah, also whiskey company. Thomas Drossier, the head of sales and trade marketing, leaving the company after 15 years at the end of July. And he is looking for new, yeah, new stuff to do on in Penno uh, in Germany. Act, um, but we don't know who is uh, getting into that. It's a bit of a thing for us uh, because we have not been able to get into Penno Ricard distilleries yet. Maybe that will change in the future. I don't know. Hopefully then we can see the distilleries videos that are kind of, yeah, my my yeah, little blind spots that I have never been able to get into. Yeah, so that was it. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.